Christian Parenting. Hey, this is Amy Parker. And Mike Naraki. The Bible for Kids podcast is now brought to you in part by our friends and partners over at ChristianParenting.org. They are reaching over half a million parents on a monthly basis with podcasts just like the Bible for Kids, offering practical help and spiritual guidance to parents just like you. Because of the Christian Parenting Podcast Network, we're able to reach people on a weekly basis with encouragement that might just help them take that pivotal next step in their parenting journey. So today, if you have been impacted by this podcast, we are asking you to visit Christian Parenting at www.cpgive.org and consider a gift to support the future creation of parenting resources. And when you give today at cpgive.org, your gift will be doubled thanks to a generous donor stepping forward with a $10,000 matching grant. All parents need a trusted community. All parents need a reminder that it's okay to be imperfect. And all parents need Jesus. As a parent comes to know and love Jesus more, so do their kids. Please visit www.cpgive.org. Welcome to the Bible for Kids podcast with your host, best-selling children's author, Amy Parker, and author and co-creator of VeggieTales, Mike Naraki. If instilling biblical values in kids is important to you, this podcast will give you the resources, wisdom, and hope to do just that. Now, Let's join our hosts, Amy and Mike, for this week's episode. Welcome back to the Bible for Kids podcast. I'm Amy Parker. And I'm Mike Naraki. And today, Amy and I are speaking with award-winning author, Christy Cambrin. And we're going to tell you all about her innovative and super cool verse mapping technique. But first, we'd like to start every episode uh, of the Bible for Kids with the Bible verse. Amy? So today's verse is from John 15, 7 of the New International Version. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Again, that's John 15, 7. Christy Cambrin is a vintage-inspired storyteller, more on that later, uh, writing both award-winning historical fiction and Bible studies. She served as a women's ministry leader and speaks at events across the country, encouraging women to experience a deeper life in the word through verse mapping. Her work has been named to the Publishers Weekly Religion and Spirituality Top 10, Library Journal Review's Best Books, RT Reviewer's Choice Awards, has received multiple INSPI Award uh, nominations, and is a 2020 Christie Award winner. And that's Christie with the C, you're Christie with a K, so it wasn't you giving yourself an award. (laughs) That that is correct. I I had no part in awarding the award. (laughs) Congratulations. um, So congratulations and and welcome to the the podcast. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I've really been looking forward to it. Um, So Christie, your bio says vintage inspired storyteller. I love that. Can you just expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I love to because I started out in healthcare. (laughs) (laughs) I I was a corporate trainer for 15 years. And so you would think, wow, ministry and storytelling, that is about as far from healthcare and Fortune 100 company as you can get. But I've always loved history and story and storytelling. And in fact, I wanted to be a Disney animator when I was a kid like that. Oh, that so cool. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I wanted to be a Disney animator. And before we hit record, we were talking about our love for libraries and everything. And, and you all made me think of when I was a kid, I used to go to the library every week in the summer and my mom would take me and my sister and I would sit on the floor in the library and I would thumb through art history and Disney animation books. And that was where I didn't realize it, but God was cultivating this love for storytelling in my heart. I I, I was just imagining you sitting there uh, singing, I want to be part of that world. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I was like, I was a little bit like Belle swinging on the ladders, you know, (laughs) like, like, yes, that, that, that would be me, but yes, the vintage aspect. So when God called me away from corporate America and into storytelling, it's very interesting that I don't I don't equate what I do to being an author. It's really a ministry space. So God has called me into this space where history and art and faith intersect. And that can look like writing fiction, writing Bible studies, verse mapping, women's ministry leadership, any of those things, but I'm in that space. So I love to incorporate vintage inspired because everything is looking back to history and what does the context bring to a story? 
But vintage is a much better word than history. I've never been a fan of history. I'm sorry to say. It's a very uh, interesting word for history, isn't yes, it? Yes, <laughs> but vintage, I can get behind. <laughs> you know, it really is. You hear the words vintage Chanel, and then you get people say, oh, tell me more. You know? <laughs> instead, of, instead of history, oh, I got to go. I'm so sorry. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at the time. Yeah. yeah. I, always, so I, I, always tell, I always tell my wife when we're driving by antique shops, and I say, antique, that's the French word for junk. <laughs> <laughs> You might find me in one of those shops. Stop by sometime. I might be there. Uh, your bio uh, mentions historical fiction, and you talked you talked about your love for history. Um, uh, how did, uh, did did you start with historical fiction, and how did you get started in general as a writer? I did. You know, when I realized that the Disney animation dream was not going to happen because <laughs> while God gave me a love for storytelling and I'm holding up my hands, listeners, you can't see what I'm doing, but I have these hands that I can't paint and I can't sculpt and I can't draw. And so being an artist was really not in the cards for me. But by the time I got to college, I knew the Lord had called me in a different direction to storytelling and I fell in love with art history. And so I have an art history research writing degree. I went to school for 13 years, undergraduate, 13 years paid cash every semester. And by the time I graduated, I'm proud of that. And, and by the time I graduated, the plan was, again, my own plan. I love how God just turns that on end. But my plan yeah. was to be an art history professor. I was already going to graduate school. I was going to get a doctorate. And I was going to teach and tell stories about what I was passionate about. And God just flipped everything for our, our family and said, I want you to start telling the stories that I want you to tell and yeah. Christ honoring stories. And I want you to go for publication, which for a gal from small town, Southern Indiana, who got B's in English, that was a very scary ask <laughs> you know, to, <laughs> yeah. to go out there and to start writing, but I did. And so by the time um, our family, we got our first publishing contract, um, had an agent, but after a couple of years of rejections, we finally got a yes. And that was almost like a fork in the road. And we kind of had a foot on both roads, meaning that I was writing fiction, but God was also calling me to verse mapping and to nonfiction and how that came about. If you want me to share, I'm happy to share. But how that came about was really kind of at that junction of graduation. And then God's telling me to go in a completely different path. Oh, I can totally resonate with that. You know, you, you mentioned you were in healthcare. I, uh, my undergraduates, I, I double majored in biology and history, started off in biology thinking, okay, well, I, you know, God's calling me to be a medical missionary. You know, that's, that was my, that was my plan and um, fell in love just taking history as, uh, you know, elective classes and decided, oh, this is just, I just feel so much more passion here and so much more, you know, interest in, in that. And so ended up double majoring and then, you know, ended up as an animated cucumber. <laughs> 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 you know, that wasn't in the cards. <laughs> it wasn't. In the cards, but yeah, but you, know, you, make, you make your plans, but God directs your path. You know, so it's that's so, right. I sure, to totally resonate with that. You just kind of um, flippantly said you tried, or, or you waited. You were rejected for two years, or you waited two years right. for publication. And I just want to point that out. Um, you know, I meet so many people who are trying to get published and, um, and, and I tell them, you know, publication may not be your plan. Maybe you're supposed to tell it to your neighbor next door. Maybe, you know, maybe publication is not your plan, but also sometimes, you know, you're being refined for a long time before you actually get published. So mm -hmm. you, uh, you went over that quickly. Um, and I'm sure in hindsight is like, we just tried for two years, but in the two years, I'm sure there was a lot of doubt and questioning and, um, just, you know, constantly being pointed back to that goal, um, yeah. which that's, it's hard to stay on track for two years. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, Amy, that. you, you are so <laughs> polished and gracious with how you said that, because in our family, we call that time, the crash and burn time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I was, you know, I mean, yeah, I, 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 um, you know, it's not that I can't relate to that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. yeah. So well, yeah. I was going to say too. You, you had also, with shame, said you got B's in English. But uh, Amy and I were, were t talking about grades a little bit earlier, uh, and so <laughs> we are proud of our B's. You know, so right there's now. no, there's no shame. There's no shame. <laughs> I'm with yeah. you. We might as well be authentic, right? Our, our our parents know the the dirty details of the B's. Might as well just go ahead and put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the B in English. Um, okay, so so your historical fiction. Are there faith elements to your historical fiction? Do 
you build that in or is it, are they just good historical fiction stories? Oh, I love that question because really every book that I write is a journey with the Lord. And as a creative, it's my opportunity to step out with him. It's really how I spend time with him. You know, I literally have mornings where I wake up and I say, I have to get to the coffee shop because I know it's game on. It's my time to spend with him. But every novel is different. So my first couple of novels were about the art of Auschwitz. So artists who created Mm. art within the concentration camps. And yes, you just, you just agreed with me, Amy, because it's like when you write something that is as heavy as the Holocaust or war or war made upon children, God has to be front and center in that story for there to be a redemptive edge. Like you have to have the spotlight right there on Jesus. But in some of my other novels, I wrote about the 1920s and the Ringling Brothers Circus. And there's more of an undercurrent of faith in that story. Yeah. Uh, My novel that comes out soon, The Paris Dressmaker, God is more in the forefront, again, because it's about the Nazi occupation during World War II. And so it's incorporated. Everything I do incorporates art, history, and faith. It just depends upon the Holy Spirit's guidance, how each novel is going to have. Well, and I think each of those, you know, I don't, I don't think there has to be faith elements in every book. I went to a conference and it was certainly a faith centered conference. Um, And the guy who does the, what's it called, Mike, the, the intro to the movie, what's it called? The announcer, the the, the 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 intro to the movie yeah like when you like spider-man has this reel that unfolds before the first scene ever opens what is that called trailer is it the trailer i don't know oh. the beginning of the movie the reel before the actual first scene opens somebody look oh, that up okay. google that <laughs> and anyway he did those and um they were spectacular mm-hmm. and you know he there's no really faith-based em- elements in the opening of Spider-Man, but just his excellence in creation, I yeah. think spoke, you know, pointed back to the creator. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I don't think there's any, um, you know, I, I think sometimes our writings that, you know, if they come from a, a, a faith centered background, I think our readers pick up on that. So. Yeah. Um, well, and, you wanna, and, and well, especially with, with, with storytelling and fiction, you want to be, you want to be careful about being preachy with it. You know, if, yeah. if the message is going to come out, it's going to come out uh, by nature of the story and you're not going to, you know, use, use dialogue to get a point across. You need to use story elements, you know, to, to reflect that, that worldview. So. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And especially if you have a team of really skilled professionals around you. So the editorials team that I work with, they are really good at picking up on that type of thing to make mm-hmm. sure that it is organic because right. we know the God of history, he was there when these yeah. events unfolded, right. but you want to make sure that you're presenting it in a way that a 2021 reader is going to identify with. And so you do want that to be a seamless kind of organic thread in your plot. Right. Yeah. Because readers pick up on that authenticity and inauthenticity. And, um, and yeah, I think that's, I think that's really important. And if you try to force those elements in there, um, that's the quickest way to to lose a reader. I have Um, learned that readers are clever. (laughs) Yes, they're pretty clever. All right. So we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Christy Cameron on the Bible for Kids podcast. Announcing Adventures from the Workshop and Beyond, a new five book box set of picture books from the Slugs and Bugs show. In the world of modern family life, it's easy to get sidetracked and forget what really matters. That's why Randall Goodgame and the team at the Slugs and Bugs Show created a new book series that joyfully weaves spiritual truth into the rhythms of each day. Delightful, whimsical fun for kids of all ages, these stories will aid families in exploring important topics such as friendship, culture, silliness, creativity, and imagination. Order your set today at slugsandbugs.com. Words are powerful, especially God's Word, which has the power to transform our hearts and minds. Tyndale Kids has created a sweet and simple way to speak God's life-giving Word over the kids in your life or anyone who needs a reminder of who they are in Christ with the generation-claimed three-book set of Bible promises. Each book in the series contains life-giving promises from Scripture that remind all God's children, both young and old, of who they are in Him. Page after page shares a promise from God and the corresponding scripture from the Bible. Readers will be transformed from the inside out and rest easier in God's love for them. The set includes the following board books. 
You are Scripture Promises Reminding Readers of Who God Says They Are. Tonight, Scripture Promises for a Peaceful Night's Rest. And Chosen, Scripture Promises that Reveal God Has a Plan for Each Person's Life. Each book is also available individually and can be found wherever books are sold. Get swept away by God's awesome story with the Epic Bible. For decades, people around the world have been captivated by comics and superheroes. Comic narratives have the power to draw us into a hero's journey where the good guy wrestles with darkness but ultimately wins against the bad guy. Adapted from the NLT translation and illustrated by DC and Marvel artists, this graphic novel style Bible will take teens and comic fans on a next level journey that will point them to a real life savior, Jesus, who infinitely outmatches any superhero and triumphs over sin and darkness crushing the enemy. The Bible is perfect for teens, comic book fans, reluctant readers, or anyone looking for a fresh approach to Bible reading. The Epic Bible's cinematic storytelling will make God's word come alive. Brought to you by Wander, the young adult imprint of Tyndale House Publishers. And we are back on the Bible for Kids podcast, and we're speaking with Christy Cameron. Christy, so you, you, we were just before the break talking about uh, your inclusion of faith in in your your fiction writing and in your writing in general. Can you tell us about your faith background? Um, when did you start to recognize scripture as something you really wanted to explore? I grew up in public school, but by the time I got to high school, my dad was an architect, so we had to kind of move around different states where the jobs were. And in high school, transitioned to a Christian school for the first time in my life for the last couple of years. And that youth experience, youth camp, and church and school experience really changed my view of scripture because before that it was Sunday school. It was a lot of the Bible stories that I remembered as a kid. It was a little bit more religion and tradition, uh, like on Christmas morning, reading Luke chapter two, we still do that, but we have a different perspective now because it's a relationship with Jesus. And, and it, back then I remember it being kind of religion. So I did meet Jesus at 16 years old. I remember stepping out of an aisle, you know, walking down an aisle and kneeling down at the front and just not really understanding what that relationship meant, but just knowing that, um, that I needed a savior, that I, I needed him and just pouring my heart out and saying, I'm not sure what you have for me in my life, but I know I want to spend that time with you. And so I knew Jesus at 16 years old, but again, life can kind of roll by and transitioning into corporate America. I was a Christian. I did take Jesus with me everywhere I would go, but I have to be open and authentic and say, there were some times that I was coasting along in my relationship with the Lord. And especially when my husband and I, we have three sons. And when we had our children, things were really important, such as going to church and uh, the Bible stories. And, you know, I just got to say it, we love Veggie Tales And Amy, <laughs> I have, you know, I, I met you at a conference and you signed a book for our youngest son. And he, he still has that book on his shelf and he loves it. And so th- those were important things in our lives, but it all boils down to that relationship with Jesus, just loving him so much that you would do anything that he asks of you. And we're, as a family, we're trying to get to that point. <laughs> it's a, it's a daily thing. <laughs> yes. And it's, I think it's a continual goal and the, and the finish line is continually moving. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so at what point then did you decide you wanted to take on this super ambitious goal of verse mapping? Because that's not just writing a book. That's like developing an entire program or curriculum that sort of encapsulates the entire Bible, which is kind of a big book. Uh, right. So what inspired you to do that? Or, or how did you begin that process? Well, I love that you transitioned from the last question that you had into this one, because it is a, <laughs> it's a really seamless transition for the answer that I it's have. Almost like, <laughs> I mean, segue in journalism. Term. <laughs> wow. How, how did you do that? Um, <laughs> but for me, it was all about spending time with Jesus. And I mentioned earlier that our family kind of hit this fork in the road when I began writing fiction. And it was literally on the same day that we got a yes. After those two years of rejections, we got a yes. <laughs> from my publishing family. An hour later, I got a call from my dad and he said, this could be bad. I may have leukemia. And so our family, we had a five month journey where I edited my first novel, The Butterfly and the Violin at the local cancer center while he was undergoing his chemo infusions. And we did have a gentle goodbye for now um, after five months. And he is with the Lord, but here's where it leads to verse mapping. Here's where it takes to the impact that the legacy of faith can have on a family and have on our kids. 
is that my dad was saved and baptized at 60 years old. And mm. he had two years on this earth with Jesus relationship, not religion with Jesus. And after he passed away, we had three Bibles. One of the Bibles was the one my mom gifted him when they were dating in the seventies. Y'all can picture this. It was burgundy leather cover gold Hi. pages. And I I have one of those. Front, you know, right. Right. I'm picturing and, the font of Holy Bible right now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and almost the, Oh, when you open it, uh, um, yeah. But it hadn't, but that Bible hadn't really been used. Yes, Amy, you're holding that up. Yes, everyone's got one. <laughs> but that Bible hadn't really been used very much during all those years. It was in kind of pristine quality. And then we had two other Bibles and your listeners can't see what I'm holding up, but I'm holding up my dad's Bible that I got after he passed away. And my mom had two yeah. of them and she said, which one do you want? And I said, I want that one because it's the Nelson study Bible. That's my publishing family. But I had no idea the legacy of faith that was inside this Bible, because to this day, I, I will not put a highlighter to the pages of this Bible because I can see all the highlighter marks yeah. throughout this Bible. That's the breadcrumb trail of the relationship that my dad had with Jesus. Yeah. And so when I did leave corporate America, when I finally stepped out, my husband and I together, and when I left corporate America, the, the first thing that I did was I said, okay, we're, we're not going back. And so I went in my closet, I got out my corporate suits and I gave them away. And then the next day I contacted church and I said, I want to do what I've never had time to do. And that's join a women's Bible study. And I took this Bible with me. And then the two things that I realized, if I can tell you very quickly, the two things I realized when I stepped into that Bible study, the first thing was that I didn't know the Bible. And I already told you, I've known Jesus since I was 16 years old. I didn't understand everything that was in the Bible. I, I felt like I had a block and I couldn't get it. And the second thing was I wasn't choosing the Bible over mm -hmm. other things, other spaces in my life. And I wanted that to change. So the prayer of my heart was God, now that I have this Bible, please make it well-traveled. And I didn't mean book signings and traveling around and speaking engagements <laughs> in churches. I meant well-traveled in me. Mm -hmm. And that's how he brought verse mapping to my heart and to my life. That's so cool. And, and you use, you use the, um, the term vintage when it came to, to history. Uh, and, and I don't know how many listeners are familiar with the phrase verse mapping, but for me, I wonder if that's your, if that's your word for exegesis. <laughs> 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 well, you know, and it's interesting too the the path that we have that we think we have a plan and we think it's a straight line from A to B, mm -hmm. and it looks like spaghetti when you when it plays <laughs> out, right? That path yeah, yeah. that's it's never a string; it's always twists and turns. And for me, I thought the 15 years of being a corporate trainer and designing curriculum, I thought that time was past. The door was closed; I wouldn't use it. But I had a friend who said, "Christy, if you want to learn scripture." She said, why don't you try verse mapping? And I said, what is verse mapping? I've never heard of that. So I did what we all do. I Googled it and I'm a visual learner. So I was looking at Bible art and journaling and spider maps and inductive study. And I thought, okay, this is great, but it's not study that is unique to me. And if I want to spend time with Jesus and my unique walk with him, we talk about this often with verse mapping, Psalm 139, God's love letter to each one of his children that is what verse mapping is. It is a unique study path between you and God. And so I took those curriculum design principles that I had used for 15 years. And I said, I'm going to find the teaching material that is there verse by verse by verse. And I want to go in the back door and see how the Holy Spirit would teach me. And so we have five steps that are rooted in curriculum design principles. That mm -hmm. sounds a little scary to say that, right? <laughs> like curriculum design principles, ah, <laughs> but it's actually super simple. We simplified it so families can do this together. And you can go verse by verse and make the story of scripture come alive in the way that we were talking about earlier about storytelling. And you've got a great resource on uh, your website, versemapping.com, uh, where you kind of have a, a verse mapping 101 um, sort of explanation of it too. So uh, listeners, you can go on and check that out, uh, um, uh, you know, to, to be sure to get an a explanation of that as well. Yeah, it was important to us that we have a space for not only tools and resources, but community as well. So we tried to make it super simple, versemapping.com or verse mapping on social media, and you can connect with our community in that way. That's awesome. So how does that work exactly? What does verse mapping look like? Like if I were to, you know, be reading my Bible today, how would I verse map something? 
Well, I, I love that question too, because I'm just going to go ahead and be open and say that uh, I do not like rules because I'm a rule, because I'm a rule (laughs) follower. So if you give me a list of rules, I am going to follow every single one of them to the letter. And so I thought if I'm going to do this, I don't want there to be a lot of rules because I was afraid if I put too many guardrails in place, that that's going to impede what God is trying to show me. And I didn't want to do that. And so the only rule that we have with verse mapping is that if you come to a conclusion about a, a verse, about a piece of scripture, you have to be able to back it up with scripture. You have to be able to back it up with the Bible. So if I come to a conclusion about the the nature of God, God is faithful, God is good all the time. I have to be able to back that up in his word. You always test it by his word and you will always find the word to be true. So that's the first thing. For verse mapping, these five steps, I I love this this visual because my mind goes back to it. With my husband and sons and I, we do all of our research trips together. I'm an experiential learner. And so we go out and we research together. We were on our way home from Ireland and we were sitting in an airport and I was reading scripture on my phone and I realized I don't have a journal, I don't have a concordance, I don't have Sharpie markers, but uh, my mind was retrained to think like a researcher because it was going through the steps of verse mapping. Select your verse that you wanna learn from today. The second step is to look at the design of that verse across multiple translations. So what are the words and phrases that you see over multiple translations, write those down. The third step is what develops the context of this verse. So you take those keywords and phrases and you look that up in the Hebrew and the Greek to really get the root understanding of what this verse is saying. The fourth step, if you can pick a favorite child, this one's my favorite (laughs) because (laughs) it is the actions. This is what makes that story come to life. When you think about the actions, I always ask people, think about your favorite movie. What is the favorite movie, a really compelling storyline, memorable characters, beautiful cinematography? What drew you in to make that story your favorite? That's what you're doing here. Get your five senses involved. Really research and dig up information that makes the story come alive with what's happening. And then the fifth step, super simple. This is the outcome. It's super simple to document, (laughs) but not to implement. This is where you actually take what you've learned and you say, I'm going to apply it to my life. And you should be able to take a post-it note and write down one to two sentences. This is what God taught me. This is how I'm going to use it. And I just took you through verse mapping. (laughs) That's wonderful. You know, and I, I, in, in some ways it reminds me of the research that, that, you know, we do in storytelling, um, you know, and, and with, with VeggieTales, I think of, um, you know, developing so many stories based off a Bible verse, uh, but you dig into it and you get the richness of it and you bring it to life um, through a story, which is what the Bible does with all of its verses as well. There's a context for that. There's a, there's a way to see that that makes it richer and richer the deeper that you dig into it um, rather than just, you know, looking uh, at a verse on its surface and saying, okay, this is, this is what it means. And so, um, you know, and, and then just, just leaving at that, but to, to, to dig in and go deeper and deeper and get the, the, the context and the, and the meaning overall. Um, all right, uh, we're going to need to take a short break, and we'll be right back on the Bible for Kids podcast. Kids have a lot of questions about God, faith, and the Bible. Why did Jesus come to earth? Who wrote the Bible? What is faith? If you're looking for a great resource to answer some of kids' toughest questions, check out The Big Book of Bible Questions by best-selling author Amy Parker and apologist Doug Powell. With sound theology and kid-friendly terms, Amy and Doug tackle 60 questions covering the Old and New Testaments. The vibrant, playful pictures bring each answer to life and make this book even more fun for kids to read on their own. Plus, you'll love having this book at your fingertips during your family devotions or for those moments when you might need some help with answering your child's questions. The Big Book of Bible Questions is available now from your favorite bookseller. One boy plus two rehydrated squirrels equals hilarious adventures in the Dead Sea Squirrels books written by Mike Naraki. Ten-year-old Michael Gomez finds two petrified squirrels while exploring a cave in Israel and stows them into his backpack, the perfect souvenirs from his trip, or so he thought. When the squirrels get rehydrated during a rainstorm, Michael comes face to face with the rather chatty couple, Merle and Pearl Squirrel, who witnessed Jesus' teachings 2,000 years ago. Hilarious missteps and misadventures happen throughout the series as Michael and his friends navigate life while Merle and Pearl offer wisdom along the way in their own squirrel style. The first six books in the Dead Sea Squirrels series are available at your favorite bookseller, and be sure to look for the Dead Sea Squirrels three-book starter pack, which makes a great gift for kids who love to laugh and read at the same time. 
Welcome back to the Bible for Kids podcast. And Amy and I are speaking with Christy Cambron. So Christy, I loved your one rule of verse mapping, um, which is if you can back up your conclusions with scripture, then you can write them down. Everything is fair game in studying as long as God said it first. So I'm just really glad that you said that out loud and in writing, because even though I've read my Bible dozens of or a dozen, probably a dozen, probably not dozens of times all the way through and devoted myself to study. I felt like, you know, I'm not a theologian. My opinion about God's word is less than in some way. Um, But God does call us to that personal walk and personal study with him. So, and, and I love that this feels so personal. So was that sort of your intention? Is that how you walked into this? I can tell you many times I have spoken with parents uh, pastors, friends, you know, I've spoken with so many. And many of the women that I have encountered who we talk about verse mapping, they say the same things that I did. I wish I'd been called to seminary. In fact, I have a friend who's in seminary and I say, wow, I'm so happy for you. I am super jealous. And I know that's not holy, but I am because you're learning, <laughs> you're, you're learning all the Hebrew and the Greek. And can I just like sit, sit on your shoulder and hear everything you're learning? I wish I could go back and say, the Lord called me to seminary and go down that road, but that was not the path that he had for me. And so I had this kind of wall built between me and God thinking I didn't go to seminary. Therefore I can't get it. And, and this is not to, to downplay academia because you all know, I said, I'm a researcher. I spent a lot of years in college and researching and I value that aspect of storytelling. But for me, busy working mom, we have three kids. I needed to know that there was a space that I could not only spend time with God, understand his word, experience him and hear from him, but also that I could share it with my family. And that was really important to us and still is for me today for verse mapping. Mm. I love that the Bibles that the actual verse mapping Bibles, the products that are there on that verse mapping.com they're Um, I mean, you could do this, I think with any Bible, but the, um, for the longest, I couldn't write in my Bible. (laughs) I'm not sure. I don't know. I just never could write in my Bible, but I have I've been reformed. I can do that now, (laughs) but, uh, (laughs) but, but the, but the Bibles, the verse mapping Bibles actually, you know, are, are created for that purpose. Like there are lines in there. You're supposed to write in there and it gives space for you to actually do this verse mapping, um, within the pages of the verse mapping Bible. So, um, anyway, I just, I just was flipping through those and I just love that that creates a tool that's just like a, you know, beginner's tool or no brainers tool to where you can just open this up and walk through the verse mapping, even if you don't remember all of those five steps that you just gave us. So, and the inspiration behind doing it that way, I love that you brought that up was actually my dad's Bible because, yeah, you know, and I, and I say often, Lord, if, if my dad knows this, I'm so sorry, but I have these homemade tabs on the Bible and they're all flowers. I'm so sorry <laughs> that I did this to your Bible, but I, I do, I, I do actually write in books. I'm not a book traditionalist, meaning that I do scribble in the margins. I write prayers. I write dates. This, the, the binding is starting to go. And I've had this for seven years. That is how much Jesus has worked with my heart and taught me. And I hope to learn so much more, but my heart is that these Bibles, that we put the maps right in there. So that families are not only comfortable with the story of God, but they're recording their journey and that the journey is going together. So for the adult Bibles and the girls Bibles, they're the same 350 maps throughout the entire body of the Bible. And we did that with great intention, again, wanting families to research the word of God, to love the story, but also to harness that love of scripture for these young kids and that they could grow up loving God and hearing from him that way. And it feels like there's a, there's, there's an intention behind physically uh, uh, writing down, right? Because I know when we can talk about research and really digging into something, you can do that digitally and, you know, and go through it that method. But this, this is like a, like a sit down and, 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 and write in the, in, in an actual paper book, right? I mean, was that, was that an intentional part of the process? Yeah, it was. And in fact, this is really funny that I'm actually going to say this, but a lot of the book introductions in the Bible I actually wrote those at a water park. I know that sounds crazy, (laughs) but my husband and sons, I was a women's ministry leader at the time. My husband and sons, we wanted to spend time together. So we would go to this water park 
every weekend. And I walked into this park with a backpack full of Bibles and books. And I got some really strange looks from the friendly security staff. Like, <laughs> what is this person doing? She doesn't have weapons. She has books. What is she doing? And they would go to the, the home base, you know, the chairs that we have by the pool. And I would go to this air conditioned restaurant with mm-hmm. families all around. And I actually wrote the Bible book introductions. I didn't have a laptop. I wrote, I hand wrote those first yeah. because we really wanted the entire experience to be we're, we're digging we say this we're digging our sandals in the dust of the story road of scripture that's yeah. what we wanted and so i actually hand wrote the bible book introductions at a water park of all places <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so yeah that was the inspiration behind it well <laughs> but- i'll say i i hand wrote um the i love my lips silly song on a legal pad while on jury duty <laughs> <laughs> Like, do the yeah. state authorities know this they know this now they're gonna come and look for you <laughs> <laughs> oh. but julia cameron who did the artist way she talks about the magic that happens when you handwrite things like your brain it slows down your brain in a way to where you actually have to um sort of edit and slow down what's in your brain before you can get it out on paper so i think i think there's a magic in that which is that very is different can- from, from my first novel. I actually wrote my first novel on my iPhone because I was in corporate <laughs> oh America. Oh my goodness, on your oh iPhone. And, <laughs> yeah, at the, only t- the only time that I had to write this book was when I was on maternity leave with our third son. And I called HR and I said, hey, everybody, am I okay to have honestly like a second job and write this book on leave? And they said, are you making any money? And I, when I started, I picked <laughs> nope. myself up off the floor and I, you know, I was laughing and I was like, well, no. And they said, it's a hobby. You can do what you want. And so <laughs> then in the middle of the night, I would just... Um, hook our baby in one arm with the bottle and, you know, just feed him like that. And then I typed out chapters on my thumb and the book oh just my goodness. came out. Oh my goodness. And so it's, so it's different. Again, the, the storytelling aspect of where God meets you, I think he meets you in the story itself, in the words and the method can change the method with how he's going to get that out, whether it's handwriting at a water park or, or feeding a baby a bottle. <laughs> like it's, it's, that's all, that's all up to him. I don't know that. <laughs> well, it, it's, it's amazing to me. And I see this with my students all the time who are taking notes on their phones. And I'm like, how are you doing that? Get out your laptop. If you're taking notes. <laughs> but it's yeah. amazing to me. And my son, my son too, it's like, he's, it's like, he's registering for a class. And I'm just like, no, don't you got to get your laptop? No, I can do this on my phone. Like, <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it just blows me away. I just can't conceive it. I used to do that in elevators in the skyscraper, you know, we would be going to different floors for different meetings and friends would look at me and say, you're writing on your book, aren't you? And I would say, yes, yes, I am. You know, (laughs) kind of put my head down. Yes, I am. I'm using this elevator ride to write some dialogue. Sorry. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to shift topics here just a little bit. Um, You've, you've uh, mentioned how greatly 2020 shifted our faith lens and the importance of remaining in God's word while we're not able to worship in person. So um, how can verse mapping help us to uh, more actively engage in God's word or help us to see it as we've never seen it before? I think after the year 2020, we all experienced just unbelievable circumstance of a pandemic. And and that's not mapped out for us as parents, Mm -hmm. as professionals. You know, we are stepping into our living room, which has become our home office, which has become our Zoom studio, which has become our podcast interview studio. I mean, it has become our worship center. And so for us and families, we're finding ourselves in closer quarters and taking on new roles. And as a parent myself, you know, I would lovingly hug my kids and apologize and say, <laughs> I cannot help you with subtracting compound fractions. I, I cannot help you, but we can go to YouTube and I will do the, I will experience this with you. I will watch the video with you. I will practice with you. I hate math, but we're going to figure this thing out. <laughs> I didn't say I hate math to them. I was trying to be positive, but that's, that's an illustration of the same thing with scripture, that you find that you remember experiences very often, much more than a story itself. You can probably think back to experiences that you've had in relationships. And you may say, I don't remember what that person said to me, but I remember how they made me feel. Mm -hmm. Same thing with studying scripture together. We may not remember, we may not memorize every one of the verses, but our children are going to remember the felt need 
the heart need of that experience of spending time with their parents, spending time with families and spending time with God. And so even before the pandemic, our heart was, and, and for years I've said for verse mapping that you have an 80 year old woman who has walked with Jesus for a really long time, elbow to elbow with an 18 year old. And the 80 year old woman is going to impart her heart and her wisdom and her experience. And the 18 year old is going to help her set up her Instagram account. And like, that's the <laughs> thing that I, that I picture the families coming together and you bring everything that you have to the table and parents and children do the same thing. Yeah. 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 And it, you're, uh, you're, you're talking about remembering things, you know, we often say that in storytelling with, with movies you've watched. It's like, I don't remember, I don't remember the plot of that movie, but I remember how it made me feel, you know? Yes. And so, yeah. And that, that emotion is such an important thing just because it resonates in us and, you know, uh, it, it, you know, it recognizes truth and it, and it just gets, gets to the heart of who we are as, as people. And so that's, that's a really important point. So thank you so much, Christy, for joining us today and sharing this wonderful resource with us. Tell everybody where they can find more. We've mentioned versemapping.com, but where they can connect with you personally and just find out more about this work. Yeah, you can find out more about my fiction work at christycambron.com. Um, yes, you did mention versemapping.com. We also have seven different editions of the Bibles, and we have a Bible study verse mapping journal that comes out on January 26th as well. And you can find all of those resources from our friends at Church Source. That's great. And listeners, uh, you know, we're always looking to give away free stuff on our socials. So don't forget to follow us on Instagram or Facebook at The Bible for Kids or at our website thebiblefordkids.com. Christy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I have really enjoyed the time with you. Thanks for listening to the Bible for Kids podcast with Amy Parker and Mike Naraki. Be sure to connect with The Bible for Kids on Instagram, Facebook, and at thebibleforkids.com. The Bible for Kids podcast is powered by the Christian Parenting Podcast Network. Find out more at christianparenting.org. Our show is also available on waynation.com. Christian Parenting.